G'day, my name's Nick, and today I'm gonna to walk you through the provider menu on the Leuvenstein Prisma Smart, or as I like to call it, the Stormtrooper. Now, if you're new to CPAP therapy, the provider menu is where you'll find more advanced settings. Things like pressure levels, comfort features, and other key adjustments to help you really dial in your therapy for the best results. And if you really wanna level up your CPAP game, this device is compatible with sleephq.com, so you can upload your data and get detailed charts and insights to really understand how your therapy is going night after night. All right, let's get started. To access the provider menu, just press and hold down both the menu button and the RAM button at the same time for about five seconds. That will unlock the secret menu. Now press the plus button and you're in. The first setting you'll see in the provider menu is the therapy mode. And you can toggle between CPAP and APAP modes by pressing the plus and minus buttons. When it's set to CPAP mode, the device will deliver one set therapy level all night long. No changes, just steady breathing support. But when it's in APAP mode, the pressure automatically adjusts throughout the night depending on what your body needs. So it will move up and down depending on how you're breathing. It's important to note that when you switch between CPAP and APAP modes, the available settings in the menu will change to match the mode that you're in. So if you select CPAP mode, you'll just set a single pressure. However, if you choose APAP mode, well, you'll get other options for things like minimum and maximum pressures, giving the device a pressure range to work within. Let's go ahead and lock in APAP mode to start with, since that's what most people use when starting out. Press the ramp button to lock in APAP mode. Next, we'll set the minimum and maximum pressure levels. And these settings define the pressure range that the device can work within while you sleep. The minimum pressure is the lowest pressure the machine will ever drop to, even if you're breathing calmly. And the maximum pressure, well, that's as high as it can go. Even if you're experiencing breathing difficulty and you need more support, it won't go above that set max pressure. The device will continuously adjust the pressure up and down throughout the night within those boundaries. Now a clinician might adjust these pressure limits based on how you're feeling, your therapy comfort, your therapy results. So for example, if a patient feels like they're suffocating, like they're not getting enough air through, then the clinician might raise that minimum pressure up a little bit just to provide a bit more comfort, a bit more airflow. Uh, it will also increase the airflow through the exhaust, helping remove CO2 so you don't get that CO2 rebreathing. Really important if you're a bigger person. All right, so you might want to increase your pressure minimum from the four, which is the lowest, up a little bit. Maybe try five, 5.5, six, see how you feel at the start of the night. And vice versa, if a patient's struggling with, say, mass leaks, or just therapy comfort, pressure's getting too strong, they're struggling to exhale, it's causing a lot of issues, then they might look at reducing the pressure maximum to make it more comfortable for the patient to improve compliance. So for this example, let's set the minimum pressure to six centimeters, just press the plus button until you reach six, and then press the ramp button to lock in that value. Nice and easy. Now we'll reduce the maximum pressure to 16 by pressing the minus button, once you've got it set to 16, once again, press the ramp button again to lock it in. Congratulations, guys. You can all give yourselves a great big pat on the back. It's a proud dad moment for yours truly. You have successfully changed your CPAP therapy pressure levels. And that's a big step towards getting your CPAP therapy dialed in just right. Next on the menu, we have the APAP response settings. And you can think of this like changing gears on a bike. Now in the dynamic response, we're dropping into a lower gear. The pressure is gonna move more quickly for events like snoring and airflow limitation, really increasing that pressure to deal with those events as they happen. However, the standard response is like cruise mode. We're switching into a higher gear. The pressure changes are more gradual. It's more comfortable for people, especially those who are more sensitive to high frequent pressure changes. Now, changing the response can really have an impact on not only your therapy results, but also your comfort. Now I recommend that you start in the standard response. It's gonna suit most people just fine. However, if you're waking up, 
you're getting good results on paper, low AHI, but you're still feeling a bit foggy, a bit tired, then you might like trying the dynamic response, all right? Because it's gonna treat the snoring, the airflow limitation, the upper airway resistance, right? Those subtle events that aren't picked up by the AHI, that's what it's gonna to aim to treat, all right? So give that a go. Might be a little bit more jumpy, so you might notice those pressure changes, but it will help reduce those rearers, respiratory effort related arousals, okay? Don't wanna to get too technical on you. Next on the menu is soft pap. And this is a comfort feature that makes it easier to exhale against the incoming pressure. And there are three options. We have number one, off. It is no reduction in pressure from the base level. Then we have one, and this is a slight drop in pressure as you exhale. And then we have two, a slightly larger drop in pressure as you exhale for even more relief. Now, if you're new to CPAP therapy and you find it hard to exhale, Start on level one and just see how it feels. And if it's still a bit too much, you can switch to level two. It will drop the pressure even more when you exhale, which makes it easy to acclimatize to the therapy while you're building up your lung muscles, your diaphragm muscles and so on, exhaling against the pressure. And if you prefer steady pressure, just one level, no drop, you can always switch it off. Let's lock in level one. You'll now see a flashing padlock icon on the screen. This feature allows clinicians to lock the setting so patients can't accidentally change it. We'll keep the padlock unlocked for now. Next up is auto start. And when this feature is turned on, the device will automatically detect when you're wearing your mask and it will start the airflow. No need to press any buttons. And it will automatically stop therapy when you remove the mask. We'll leave that toggled on. Next up, we have soft start max time. Now soft start, is designed to make falling asleep with therapy more comfortable. We start at a nice low pressure and that pressure gradually increases over a set time period while we're drifting off. And that max time lets you choose how long that gradual ramp buildup takes. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, up to a max 45 minutes. And it's especially useful for patients who are sensitive to pressure changes when they're drifting off. And one thing about automatic CPAP machines, across the board pretty much, all devices, they're pretty horrible at determining wake breathing versus sleep breathing. And what I mean by that is, when a patient is transitioning from wake to sleep, often their breathing goes a little bit shaky and it can sort of resemble sleep disordered breathing. And so the device increases the pressure to try and stabilize the breathing when it doesn't really need to do that. Breathing is fine, oxygen levels are fine, you're just falling asleep, breathing's changing a little, but when that pressure goes up, it can disturb sleep for some patients. So by setting this um, ramp, this soft start, we're saying to the machine, hey, cool your jets, hold your horses, we're gonna keep the pressure nice and low, let the patient get into a deeper sleep before we start adjusting those pressures higher. But this example will increase it to 45 minutes, which is the max. Next, we'll set the soft start pressure level. Now, this is the starting pressure the device uses when soft start begins. It's the airflow you'll feel when you first put on your mask, low and gentle, and it will gradually ramp up over that time period we just set until it reaches your therapy range. And you wanna choose a starting pressure that you're comfortable with. All right, you want enough airflow so you don't feel like you're suffocating. You don't want too much where, I don't know, it feels difficult to exhale or you're getting mask leaks. Just start on a nice, low, gentle pressure. Normally somewhere between the four and a half to seven range is a good starting pressure. Some people like more, some people like to start on four. It's about what's comfortable for you at the end of the day and everyone's different. Next we have the tube setting and it's extremely important that you get this right, and you select the correct tube size to match the tube size you're using in the settings. You don't wanna end up in a scenario where you're using a 22 millimeter tube, but in the settings it's set to 15 millimeter or vice versa, because it will completely throw off how the device regulates the pressure, your comfort and so on, all right? So make sure you get that right. A lot of the time what happens is a clinician will set up a patient with the right tube size, 
But then the patient might go off and buy another tube online, wherever, they put it on and shit hits the fan, right? They're like, what's going on here? Everything's completely different. So just make sure you get that setting right. And providers can also lock patients out of some of these settings. So if it's locked, you'll need to unlock it in order to change it, okay? Now we can set the time on the device. Pretty basic sort of stuff I know, but important for accurate tracking and reports, especially if you're using Sleep HQ. And after that, we have the Bluetooth settings. This is if you want to pair up your device with the Prisma smartphone app. For diagnostic search, make sure you keep this off as this setting is for home-based titration studies. You guys don't need to worry about this sort of stuff. And last of all, we have cellular. Now, when this is toggled on, your device will connect up to the cell towers, and this is for remote patient monitoring and management. It's just a super convenient way for your clinic or your doctor to monitor your therapy, keep track of you, and change settings remotely. Next up is delete data. And you guessed it, that's exactly what it will do. It will format the SD card and erase all stored data. And once it's gone, you can't get it back. So make sure that you upload your therapy data to Sleep HQ so you always have a backup. Or you can obviously copy your SD card to your computer, upload it to Google Drive, whatever you want. But it's always good to have a backup of your therapy data just in case you need it. And that's all she wrote, guys. A full walkthrough of the provider menu on the Stormtrooper. I hope you enjoyed it. We covered therapy modes, response settings, comfort features, connectivity, and a whole lot more. And hopefully this empowers you to take control of your therapy, right? Just take your time when you're making adjustments because it will affect your therapy and your comfort. And if you're unsure, obviously consult with your clinician. And as I mentioned earlier, this device and all the Lowenstein devices, as well as ResMed, Fisher & Paykel, and Philips, they're all compatible with Sleep HQ. This is a platform that I developed with my best mate, Adam. We built it to empower you guys, and it's a really useful tool. It's free to use, so make sure you check it out. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.